Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're going to take our previous UI arrow pointer and add the ability for multiple pointers. Let's get started. So we previously created this arrow pointer in here. It's pointing to a position in the world and displaying it as an arrow. When the position is off screen, it sh it's off to the side and shows an arrow. When the position is on screen, it converts into a cross and is placed on top of the target position. We also have some code testing if we are near the position and when we get close, the arrow changes position. Go just like that. All right, so now we want to be able to display multiple arrows pointing to different positions. So first, let's go into our quest pointer code in here. Someone pointed out in the previous video that there's a better way to test if the values are within the range and that is to use mathf.clamp. So let's use that right now. This way it works, but using clamp will make it cleaner. So let's make our cap target position dot x equals mathf.clamp clamp takes a value and puts it in between a min and maximum. So the min is the border size, and in this case the maximum is screen dot width minus our border size. Do the same thing for the y, using the y border size and dot height, and remove all of this. All right, so this should work exactly the same, but it's a bit more clean. And there you go, the arrow is still correctly placed within a border of the edge of the screen and everything is working the same. Okay, great. So now in the editor, let's place a couple more tents. So let's duplicate, place another one down here and another one far off in here. We want to display different arrows pointing to each of these tents. Okay, so let's go into our window code. And in here, we're using a show function, which is consistent with the way this class is set up. The window is shown when the function is called. But now we want to have the window always active and create and destroy each individual arrow. So let's rename show into create pointer. So rename create pointer. As a little visual studio tip, if you hit control RR, you can easily rename a function and it will rename every instance where that is used. So now in here, we're going to take a target position as normal, but we're not going to set active and we're not going to set a member position. In here, we're going to create a pointer object. So let's first make a public class and call it quest pointer. And we're making this public since we want to return this object to whoever wants to create a pointer. Let's make a constructor, so public quest pointer. And in here, we're going to take a vector three for our target position and store it as a member variable. Since each pointer is going to have its specific game object, we're going to receive a game object for the pointer game object, and also a sprite for the arrow sprite, and another sprite for the cross sprite. So on our create pointer, let's create this object. So make a quest pointer, quest pointer equals new quest pointer. And we're going to give it the target position. For the pointer game object, let's make a pointer game object and it's going to be a duplicate of our pointer template, which is going to be essentially this. Let's just rename it back in our editor, but it's going to be the same thing in here. And we're going to give it in here, also give it the arrow sprite and the cross sprite. And finally, let's return the quest pointer from our function, return the quest pointer. Okay, so now that we're creating this object, let's convert the rest of the code to use this object instead of our previous member variables. So let's go up here, instead of having all this, let's have a private quest pointer, quest pointer, and let's remove all of this, which will actually be placed in our specific object. And on awake, instead of doing this, we're going to do this on our constructor. And we're going to have a public void update, which we're going to execute the code that we were running previously in here. So let's go copy all of this into the specific object update. Copy the helper function as well in here. There you go. And on our update, we're simply going to run the quest pointer dot update. And also, again, since we're no longer hiding this window, let's remove the hide. In here, in order to do our screen to world point calculations, we also need the UI camera. So let's pass that in as a parameter as well. So the UI camera, let's pass it in in here. 
All right, so essentially our code is still working exactly the same, but we have reorganized it to use an object instead of running everything on the Windows update. And then here set the member quest pointer to this quest pointer. So finally, let's go into our game handler and right now let's only create the pointer and comment out all of this code right here. Okay, so we're only creating the pointer. So right now we should see pretty much the same thing that we saw previously. Okay, so there you go. That arrow is working exactly the same. When I get to the end, it gets placed on top. Okay, great. As you can see, there's a secondary arrow here. That is our template, which we're going to hide. But as you can see, everything's working exactly the same, but our code is now organized to be able to easily support multiple arrows. So let's first go into our UI in here and rename this to pointer template and let's just hide it. This is what we're going to use to duplicate to create our various pointers. Let's go in here, instead of grabbing the pointer, it's the pointer template. And when we create it, we also have to do dot set active to true. Yep, there you go. Now I can only see my arrow. Okay, good. So now in order to add support for multiple arrows, let's simply switch this out from a simple quest pointer to a list of quest pointer, name it quest pointer list. In here, we want to add our newly created quest pointer to our quest pointer list. So let's go into the quest pointer list and add this quest pointer. Okay, now up here on our awake, let's do quest pointer list equals new, instantiate our list. And on our update, we are going to go for each quest pointer, quest pointer in quest pointer list, and we're going to run our update. All right, so let's make sure everything's still working the same. Yep, there I am, there's a single arrow, okay, good. So now let's go into our game handler and create multiple pointers. All right, I am now creating a pointer on top of each specific tent. Yep, there you go. We now got three arrows. Let's see if they're pointing correctly. And yep, that one's pointing to that one, pointing to that one, and that one is pointing away. Okay, great. So it seems like our multiple arrows are now correctly working. So now the only thing missing is the ability to destroy them. Let's go into our window code and here let's make a public void destroy pointer. And we're going to receive a quest pointer as our parameter. So quest pointer. So in order to destroy it, let's remove it from the list, remove our quest pointer, and let's create a function called destroy self, which we're going to place on our object in here, public void destroy self. And this function will destroy the game object. So destroy the pointer game object. Okay, so on my game handler in here, when we create a new pointer, the function to create the pointer returns a quest pointer. So let's store that. So store our window quest pointer dot quest pointer. So quest pointer. So we are storing a reference to our pointer and here let's create a function updater. The function updater is part of the CodeMonkey utilities, which is always you can grab for free from unitycodemonkey.com. And a function updater triggers a action on every update. So on this update, we want to test if the player is near our quest pointer. So let's test if vector three dot distance between the camera dot main dot position, the distance between that and our pointer position, which in this case is 245. If it is under 40F, then let's simply destroy this quest pointer. So go into our window quest pointer dot destroy the pointer and we're going to destroy this pointer. And finally return true to destroy this function update. Okay, let's see if the first pointer is destroying when we get near it. Okay, so here I am, that's the first arrow. So when I get near, it should vanish. And poof, there you go, it's gone. All right, let's apply that to all the others. All right, so here I am, and when I get near the first arrow, and boom, it vanishes, the second vanishes, and the third one, there it is on the corner in there, and when I get near, it vanishes. So there you have it. We took our UI arrow pointer window and converted it to support multiple arrows. In the next video, we're going to customize our pointers with different sprites and colors. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.